بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا رائم آف دی اینشینٹ میرینر دا رائم آف دی اینشینٹ میرینر از اے نریٹو پوئم ان وچ اے سی مین ٹیلز این ادر مین اف اسپینچ اینڈ ٹیریفائنگ ٹیل دی ایکشن ٹیکس پلیس ان دا فالوئنگ لوکیلز سیورل ہنڈریڈ ایئرز اگو number one a street or by way in a locale with a hall in which a wedding reception is being held number two a sailing ship with 201 crew members including the ancient mariner number three the atlantic ocean number four the south pole number four the pacific ocean have a need to change the number number 5 the pacific ocean number 6 we need to change number 5 into 6 the mariner's native country undisclosed the atmosphere is ghostly pre preternatural mysterious there are seven major characters in the poem number 1 ancient mariner old sailor who roams from country to country to tell a strange tale number 2 wedding guest man on the way to a wedding reception with two other men the mariner singles out the wedding guest to hear his tale number 3 200 crew men ill fated members of the ship carrying the mariner number 4 pilot boatman who rescues the mariner A pilot is an official who guides ships into and out of a harbor. Number four, pilot's boy, pilot's assistant. Number six, hermit, holy man who absolves the mariner and hears his story. Number seven, albatross, large web-footed seabird with a hooked bill. Most species of albatrosses. wander the southern seas from tropical regions down to antarctica drinking sea water and feeding on squid cuttlefish and other small sea creatures sometimes they follow ships to feed on their garbage albatrosses have an astonishing ability to glide in the wind sometimes for hours but have difficulty staying aloft without a wind in the latter case they sit on the water to rest or sleep when it is time to breed they go ashore an old superstition says killing an albatross brings bad luck all the sailors have been known to kill and eat them The rhyme of the ancient mariner has helped make this superstition common knowledge throughout the world among land lovers as well as sailors in a modern parlance a person or an event that brings back that brings bad luck is often referred to as an albatross a narrator begins the poem by telling the reader about an ancient mariner who stops a man on the street to recite a story after getting the man's attention the mariner then tells his tale thus the rhyme of the ancient mariner is like a framed painting the frame represents one narrator telling about the mariner the painting represents the mariner narrating his story the mariner sometimes quotes another person such as the pilot however the pilot is not a narrator since he is merely speaking dialogue and not telling a story the rhyme of the ancient mariner begins with a one paragraph summary called an argument the poem then begins three men are on their way to a wedding reception when an old sailor stops one of them to tell him a story so eager is the old fellow to tell his tale that he raises on hand to prevent the wedding guest from moving on the mariner then begins the story there was a ship but is unable to continue 
because the wedding guest angrily orders the mariner to cease blocking his way but after the old man lowers his hand the guest cannot continue on for he is hypnotized by the mariner's glittering eye like a 3 year old child eager for a wonderful story the guest sits on a rock and listens the mariner says the ship sailed southward on the atlantic ocean with a fair wind the sun rose from the sea crossed the sky and sank in the west in its daily ritual as all went well while the ship sailed onward day after day even though the wedding guest hears music from the nearby wedding celebration he keeps his attention riveted on the old mariner and his tale alas a great storm came the mariner says driving the ship for the south as it passed through mist and snow to a land of ice antarctica everywhere the crew men looked they saw ice then out of the fog a great sea bird appeared an albatross and wonder of wonders the ice around the ship cracked and the ship picked up a wind and sailed north the albatross therefore was a good omen it came to the ship every day on string the mariner's hollow it played it ate of the crew men's food during the evening religious services called vespers vespers it perched on a mast or a rope then one day the mariner shot the bird with his crossbow the rest of the crew condemned his cruel act saying he had killed the bird that made the breeze to blow however when the fog disappeared and the sun shone gloriously they approved the act saying he had killed the bird that brought the fog and mist and so the crew became partners in his crime but not long afterwards the sails fell as the air grew still day after day under a boiling sun the ship hardly moved it was as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean and the men thirsted in the middle of an ocean with water everywhere they saw slimy creatures crawling on the sea and at night they beheld a fire dancing on the ropes and chains that controlled the masters and ill omen sailors at sea often saw this phenomenon known as saint elmo's fire it is electricity discharge from pointed objects such as mosses during storms the phenomenon can also be seen on land on trees on towers that rise to a point today it can also be seen in the air on wings and uh, propellers of aircraft blame blaming the mariner for their woes the crew men hung the dead albatross around his neck as each man weakened with thirst and fatigue the mariner beheld a sign in the sky a mere speck that grew into a mist and took shape upon its approach it appeared to be a ship the men were heartened but what kind of ship moves without a wind when the sun was setting the vessel drew near and revealed itself as a ghostly skeleton of a ship line 177 with only two crew members one was a specter woman life in death line 193 with red lips yellow hair and white skin the other was her maid death they rolled dice for the crew men and death won everywhere except the ancient mariner he was the prize of life in death all the crew 200 men then dropped dead one by one all except the mariner their souls flew by him to heaven or hell like arrows shot from a crossbow 
The wedding guest interrupts the narrative at this point to express his fear of the mariner. After all, the old man could also be a departed soul, a ghost. But the mariner assures him that he is flesh and blood, then continues his tale. Now he was alone on the ocean, only with only slimy sea creatures to keep him company. He tried to pray but failed. The lifeless crewmen, meanwhile, looked up at him with a never changing gaze, fixed by death for seven days and nights. He endured their gaze during this time at night in the moonlight. He watched the water snakes, blue, glossy green, and velvet black, swim and quail. Their sleek beauty touched him, and he found himself blessing them. He also found that he was able to pray. In short, he was beginning to regret shooting the albatross. Suddenly, the albatross fell from his neck and sank into the sea. And then the mariner slipped into a gentle sleep, for which he thanked Mary, the Holy Mother who is King Queen of Heaven. When he awakened, rain was falling and wind was roaring. Although the wind did not reach the ship, the ship began to move, and the dead crewmen rose to man the ship, steering, tugging the ropes. The body of his brother's son helped him pull on a rope, though he spoke no words. The wedding guest again interrupts to express his fear, but the mariner again calms him and resumes the story as follows. At dawn the ghostly crewmen let loose the ropes and made sweet sounds, mingled with the songs of birds. It was an angelic symphony the ship sailed on. A spirit, it seemed, was moving the ship. Then the ship began to rock and bob, and suddenly lurched forward, causing the mariner to fall in a faint. When he came to, he heard two spirit voices. One asked whether this was the man who shot the albatross. The other confirming that it was said, the mariner had done penance for his wrongdoing, but still had more penance to do. The ship began to sail northward at such a great speed that the mariner went into a trance. When the mariner woke up, the ship was sailing gently onward. All the dead crewmen were standing together staring at the mariner. A wind like a gale across a meadow in the spring began to blow, tousling the mariner's hair and cooling his cheek. The ship picked up speed and soon the mariner saw a lighthouse, a hill and a church. It was his native land at long last. The water in the harbor bay was calm, reflecting the light of the moon. On the ship, the corpses were no longer standing, but lying lifeless and flat. Over each body was a seraph, an angel, giving off a heavenly light that could be seen on the shore. Soon a boat came rowing forth, carrying a pilot, the pilot's boy, and a hermit singing hymns. The hermit who lived in boats near the sea and knelt on moss to pray, loved to talk with the sailors from afar. When the boat drew close, the mariner heard them say that the ship looked strange. It had a fiendish look. The pilot said, suddenly, the ship sank, rumbling down and leaving the mariner floating helplessly. But in a moment, he was in the pilot's boat which whirled round and round. When seeing the mariner's face, the pilot fell down in a fit, and the hermit prayed. The mariner took up oars and began rowing. At that, 
the boy laughed observing that the devil knows how to row after the boat reached land the mariner begged the hermit to hear his confession and absolve him of his sins what manner of man art thou the hermit said and the mariner told him his tale since that the time the mariner says he has felt a compulsion to travel from land to land it is his penance whenever he remembers his experience at sea the terror of it all he must stop someone to tell him his story in order to leave his agony he knows at a mere glance which man he must single out to listen to the tale the wedding celebration continues while the mariner hears a vesper bell calling him to prayer it is far sweeter to him to pray to god he says then it would be to enjoy the pleasure of a wedding celebration the mariner notes that a man prays best who loveth best all things both great and small that is who loves all of the things that god created the mariner then walks on so does the wedding guest as if stunned but he is a sadder and wiser man man is sinful creature but redemption awaits him if he repents his wrong doing and performs penance this theme manifests itself as follows after the ancient mariner commits a sin by killing the albatross guilt haunts him in the form of strange natural and supernatural phenomena during one terrifying experience he has a change of heart and repents his wrong doing after confessing to the hermit he carries out a penance which is to travel the world to, to tell his tale to strangers human beings should respect all of god's creation and all of his creatures including the albatross and even sea snakes and doing so people indicate their respect for the creator himself in his parting words to the wedding guest the narrator says farewell farewell but this i tell to the thou wedding guest he prayeth well who loveth well both man and bird and beast the mariner undergoes terrifying experiences as he confronts supernatural wonders in particular the female figure known as life in death when the mariner sees her rolling dice with death he says we listened and looked sideways up fear at my heart as at a cup my life blood seemed to sip the mariner even frightens the wedding guest when he tells him that all the crew men fell dead one by one the wedding guest says i fear the ancient mariner i fear thy skinny hand and thou art long and lank and brown as in the ribbed sea sand colrich plainly makes the point that beyond the boundaries of the known world are many strange and fearful sights that explorers will encounter adam adam committed the original sin that brought woe upon mankind the original sin in this context is the killing of the albatross the crew men are inheritors of the mariner's original sin just as christians are inheritors of adam's original sin as the mariner says and i had done a hellish thing and it would work him war when the ancient mariner kills the albatross described in the poem as a holy thing held in god's name he is like the christian who commits sins for which christ died on the cross the ghostly skeleton ship carries death and life and death death of course is a consequence of original sin life in death 
is the loneliness the separation from god that a sinner encounters before dying the best pilot rescues the mariner after the ship sinks representing the saving grace of a merciful god the hermit represents redemption he bears the mariner's confession and pronounces a penance requiring the mariner to tell his tale the world over to warn others of the consequences of sin wedding celebration everyday life that continues merrily without its participants full knowledge and respect of the higher rules of the universe as part of his penance the mariner educates one of the wedding guests about the importance of abiding by the laws of god the scene of a wedding celebration is of course an excellent place for the mariner to tell his story after all a marriage is a beginning and new life will come from it will the newly weds and their children abide by god's laws or will they thoughtlessly shoot albert rosses perhaps the wedding guest who walks on at the end of the poem will boss on his new insights to the bride the groom and others at the wedding feast the climax of the poem occurs when the mariner has a change of heart and the albatross falls from his neck besides end rhyme college also frequently uses internal rhyme following our examples the guests are met the feast is set the ship drove fast loud roared the blast and through the drifts the snowy cliffs the ice did split with the thunder fit and mist or cloud on mast or shroud the fair breeze blew the white foam flew for poetic effect college inverts the word order from time to time as the following lines demonstrate instead of the cross the albatross about my neck was hung the normal word order would be was hung about my neck through utter drought all dumb we stood the normal word order would be we stood all dumb the naked hulk alongside came the normal word order would be came alongside college occasionally uses enchantment the practice of carrying the sense of one line of verse over to the next line without a pause here are examples and now the storm blast came and he was tireless and strong we could not speak no more than if we had been choked with soot instead of the cross the albert ross about my neck was hung there passed a very time each throat was parched and glazed each eye figures of speech the poem is rich in figures of speech here are examples structure rhyme college divides the poem into seven parts most of the stanzas in the poem have four lines several have five or six lines in the four line stanzas the second and fourth lines usually rhyme in the five and six line stanzas the second or the third line usually rhymes with the final line meter the meter alternates between iambic tetrameter with 4 feet per line and iambic trimeter with 3 feet per line following is an example the first four lines of part 2 of a stanza with this pattern the sun now rose upon the right tetrameter out of the sea came he trimeter still hid and we stand on the left tetrameter went down into the sea trimeter
alliteration by the long grey beard and glittering eye he holds him with his skinny hand the wedding guest here beat his breast for he heard the loud bassoon the merry minstrelsy the furrow followed free an ophora the ice was here the ice was there the ice was all around with throats unslaked with black lips baked without a breeze without a tide her lips were red her looks were free her locks were yellow as gold her skin was as white as the leprosy they groaned they stirred they all uprose irony water water everywhere and all the boards did shrink water water everywhere nor any drop to drink nor any drop to drink water is everywhere but there is none to drink met offer each turned his face with a ghastly pang and cursed me with his eye comparison of the appearance of the eye of a curse they coiled and swam and every track was a flash of golden fire comparison of the wake left by the sea snakes to fire on omotopia it cracked and growled and roared and howled personification the sun came up upon the left out of the sea came he and he shone bright and on the right went down into the sea comparison of the sun to a person simile every soul it passed me by like the wings of my cross pow comparison of the passing of a soul to the sound of a shot arrow the sky and the sea and the sea and the sky lay like a load on my very eye comparison of the sky and sea to a weight on the eye her beams be mocked the sultry main like april hoar frost spread comparison of reflected sunbeams to frost the bride hath paced into the hall red as a rose is she comparison of the bride to a rose the water like of witches oils burnt green and blue and white comparison of water to witches oils day after day day after day we stuck nor breath nor motion as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean comparison of the motionless ship and ocean to paintings cynic doki the western wave was all a flame wave refers to the ocean dear students the question of the rhyme of the ancient mariner ends here let's meet in the next video take very much care allah hafiz